it beginning to 3000 BC, where we have our kings. And I think, I think, how many of you are not Africans here? Non Africans. Non Africans. Okay, everyone is an African. So, you may not believe this, but there are Africans who are traded, traded like they only trade cryptocurrencies. They are traded for grains of salt, traded for a mirror. This thing here, you see here, uh, was worth 10,000 slaves. And at that time, that was the medium of exchange. Moving on, we get to see that we now move into maybe metal coins and all these different coins before we arrive at paper money that is 2000, the 8th century after the death of Christ, AD. Once we get to paper money, something interesting comes up. Here we have something that is easily divisible, easily traded, easily moved around. It just has one small challenge. It is so easy to copy. It is so easy to counterfeit. And I think all banks around the world have tried as much as they can to make sure that they can fight counterfeit, counterfeit you know, uh, rackets and everything. But with paper money, we now need to digital money. And something I wanted to point out is that between digital money and uh, paper money, there's only one challenge. Each of them have this small little challenge. It is so easy to copy. You can literally you can wake up and develop a coin, right? So how, as developers, and it's a question maybe, because this is a really short talk I wanted to give, as devs who are going to carry this community forward, how are you going to ensure that we deal with this problem? I just wanted to get a few people who can give just, just an idea, like, when it comes to digital money, it's so easy to copy. How? How, how do we ensure? How do we ensure that it's not... Anyone? Ah, everyone is hungry, man. Damn. No one wants to talk. Yes. Tell us your name, what you do, and where you're from. My name is David, David Baka, I'm a design Baka. Um, I am a student at Green Master Business School. Yes. Yeah, so I'm mainly here for the business side of blockchain. But also, um, I think how devs can differentiate themselves is one by being niche, like building from niche audience, but also attaching value to to what they are doing in terms of tangible value. For example, we talked about property management, but um, adding, adding a real-world presentation or a noble cause to your kind of project or coin or token that you're doing for a niche audience. Okay, that is adding value to a niche audience. Anyone else who wants to try? Yes, yellow jumper. Um, let me get to you, let me get to you there. So how do we deal with this problem? This digital money is so easy to copy. Um, so... Okay. <laughs> okay, so my name is Malcolm Brunson, and I'm a fourth year student um, in the current event of engineering So, um, in terms of the cryptocurrency space and digital money, yeah, um, as of right now, we have about 19,000 coins. So, the question of um, can we do away with the copy? That's something that I think not, that we can't really do with the copy. But I think that what we can do is try to um, build a system that can kind of harmonize this, these coins. So, it's not so much about, because we, we, anyone can do it. You can literally sit down in the best place, you can have your better coin on. So, I think it comes down to how we make sure points correlate with each other. So like these ecosystems are not separate. And maybe it's just one place where you can monitor whatever's going on. So is the future cross-chain? Yes. How do we deal with uh if you have example first that you will come to you. How do we deal with this issue? Can this yourself or your problem and yes I'm called Mr. So we're developer. Uh, with the issue of copying I don't think it's, it's going to work. It's there to stay. And I don't think it would be a very big problem. What we have to do is to educate people to follow things like market cap. Because you can copy your other coins, but you won't copy the market cap. So you need to show uh, the, the general population of seeing the most valuable coin 
by looking at the numbers. How many third party people? Okay, yes. Introduce yourself, where you're from, and uh, how do we deal with the COVID? Because unfortunately, if, not unfortunately, fortunately, if we can solve the coping problem, literally by tomorrow, banks will make this thing everywhere, and you devs who are here will be the next Bill Gates and everything. So, how do we solve it, according to you? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joseph. Um, the subject of uh, uh, major in Andre, and I'm also a third year student at Macquarie University in computer science. Well, uh, as I said, the problem of coping can never go away. It's the same thing with fiat currency. We have counterfeit money. That's why the government is trying to introduce uh, digital payments. So the problem. One, how to solve this problem is one, we have to work with the people in authority. Uh, these are the governments. One, cause the masses, the people or the citizens of any country believe in their government. That's the truth. Uh, two, is to also regulate the space because without regulation, uh, people can decide to do anything. Right now, there are laws that prohibit you from uh, transferring a certain amount of money from one country to another. But with crypto, you can transfer as much as you want to any destination. Location doesn't matter. Yeah. That's amazing. Let me just get one more, and because uh, we need to go to lunch. Introduce yourself and how we solve this. Thank you very much. I'm Carissa Andrew, I'm a software engineer. Uh, so I think uh, it can't go away, but uh, we have to go back to the fundamentals of money and its value. So uh, before money was back to uh, gold, and uh, we've seen with time, uh, it's back to the economies. So uh, we have to look at what this digital money is back to, what is its value. Right now, we can't go with Bitcoin because it is valuable, it has value. So uh, someone comes up to copy uh, a currency or something or a digital asset because of the value, yeah? What value is behind that asset, yeah? Value, value, okay, one last one. Thank you very much. And I hope everybody is fine. I'm Joseph Sipro from Modern Tech Crypto Card Limited. The question is, how do we avoid copy? Is it true? How do we deal with the copy? As for the uh, previous uh, contributors, copy is very hard to get rid of. So it has to stay and it's going to stay. But then, what are the regulators coming up with to protect the corporates? Two, when you create a project, what are the aims? And how can those aims be fulfilled and how can they be protected? I think it's the best way to deal with the copy. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. So, I think you've had the answers which everyone has given. And uh, one of the key things doing the research on this um, at Moda, we have a cryptocurrency exchange. And uh, one of the key things we focus on is I'll give an example um, a scammer fake a USDT kind of coin and he came to our support and he's like, I've just sent a hundred billion BTC in your wallet, you must pay me back. He sent us fake coins which looked like USDT, they had the name USDT, even had the logo USDT. But how can we be able to avoid such a thing from happening on a large scale to a big exchange? The key factor, and I think the gentleman here raised it, lies in two words, network effects. And I think as developers, you guys are going to have to choose your network effects. Because are you going to choose to develop on Ethereum because it has X amount of users? 
Are you going to choose to develop on Bitcoin, the Lightning Network? Which one are you going to choose? Because there are going to be so many. What if five years from now, Bitcoin is actually not even as valuable as you think? Does that mean that your skills as a developer are now useless? What happens in that case? So, I stand here to pose a question to you. Given that we are entering new money, given that we are entering this new phase of uh, you know, digital transformation, what are the choices that as a developer you're going to make that will impact? Because unfortunately, we cannot run this without you. Developers are 90% of this digital economy. You are the special breed. We need you. And if there's a way to take all of you to realize, nice. but you have to choose and say, you know what? As devs, we decide that we're going to build on this chain, on this, or maybe a couple of chains, and those will become the new money. And we are hoping that you guys make the right choice uh, for the rest of the community. So thank you so much for coming here. Thank you so much for coming in large numbers. This shows that the community is growing. And at Google, we're always very, very welcoming to devs. We have amazing projects that we're looking at. Um, our NFT engine is something that is in the pipeline. I think Q1 next year is where we'll be looking at uh, getting into this core development with devs. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, amazing projects that we could be able to build. But uh, thank you so much for listening to me. My name is Dan Lucas. You can come to our table with the exchange at the entrance there and we can chat more. Thank you so much.